You might remember this old truck from a Fiery Dragon episode. Remember I said that we would do a video on it? Well, here we go. It's a 1953 Chevrolet pickup short bed. Oh, I remember daddy buying this. I was probably 12, 13 maybe. And it sat in the driveway a couple of years. And then we finally started working on it. And this is what I drove my senior year in high school and a year or two after that, before I bought my first car. Uh, I thought this was the baddest thing on the road. And it, it was pretty sharp back in. It wasn't quite this rough looking. Uh, we stole the whole running gear out of a 69 Impala. It's got a 327 two barrel, three speed, and the rear end I think was a 308 gear. I remember us spending several nights getting the motor and transmission rear end, putting this thing. And then I probably wasn't, you know, 14 years old when we did that. I remember the first time we took it for a drive when everything was working, we was headed to the muffler shop to get exhaust put on it because it just had straight headers. And hearing that thing running down the road straight headers, you know, to a 14 year old boy back in was just, it was the best thing in the world. Anyway, let's walk around it and take a gander at it. The old truck's in pretty good shape. You know, it's got some rust, but it's just not eat up with it. We got a little rust hole there in the fender. That ain't too bad. If you're wondering why that primer is on the door and the fender, well, it had flames on it. And the guy that daddy got it from, I guess, painted over those flames i'm not a big flame guy but well i'll show you on the other side because you can see them better i kind of like them on this truck and we may do an episode where i sand that primer down and, and try to bring the flames back they're all over the hood and the fender uh i kind of like them like i said the old truck's in pretty good shape it ain't a whole lot of rust the most of the rust is inside the cab the floorboard and kick panels i'll show you that here in a minute now, if you're wondering why there's so many plastic jugs in the back of this truck, well, take one guess, Fiery Dragon. Why I threw them in the back of the truck? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, look at here. <laughs> we got a little tree growing out in the middle of it. Here's the other side. You can see the flames a lot better over here. I just think it would look pretty cool and nostalgic to uncover those flames a little bit. This definitely needs a bath, though. It's got moss all over it. Of course, I don't have a tire over here, wheel over here. I'll have to find one. And the two tires on the other side are pumped up. This one's down, but it'll probably hold air. If we get the thing running, I'd like to take it for a drive. To the dumpster, hopefully. <laughs> Let's ganderize the inside a little bit. It ain't a whole lot to look at. Just an old truck. Hmm, I think I need a new seat. I forgot it was that wore out. I put that little Grant steering wheel on it. You know, it had the stock steering wheel. It was humongous. It was out to here. Made it easier to steer, but I didn't like how it looked. So I put that little thing on there and whew, trying to steer this thing in a parking lot with that little steering wheel. Man, that was a job. We got some gauges over here. What is that? Oil, gas, water, amps. Uh, the floorboard, daddy put that in here a long time ago. And it's some thick, thick metal galvanized. And I don't know that it would ever rush through. I did the kick panels, them little patch panels there. Trying to just keep all the cold air from coming in during the winter. That's about it to show you inside. It's just an old truck. Let's pop the hood and see what we got under there. Well, there it is. Like I said, it's a 327, can have a 69 Impala. Yes, that is an Edelbrock Victor Jr. single plane manifold with a Holly double pumper, mechanical secondary. Yes, that is entirely too much for this little old stock 327. Uh, that stuff was originally bought for a really hot little 283 that's going to be a high revving motor. And that's what that was going to go on. I never built that motor. 
uh i got all the parts to do it and i'll probably do a video on that sometime but i just threw them on this truck one day just messing around and yes it's way way too much for this little motor i took the alternator off a few years ago and i really don't remember why it's sitting in the garage i'll just throw it back on if we get it running i want to drive it uh it's got hei we put that on there this fuel filter over here this gas tank in this thing I've had it out several times and it just rusts right back. I mean, almost immediately. I'm talking about when I was driving it every day too. And it would stop the filter up on the carburetor. Of course it wouldn't run. I'd have to blow the line out, clean the little filter out. It'd run for a few weeks and then do it again. So that fuel filter come off of an 81 Volkswagen Rabbit diesel. So we threw it on there and that solved the problem. That filter is probably 30 years old. So I may spin it off there and look at it. I may go get a new one. Uh, I'm trying to remember all the modifications we did on this thing. The clutch master came off of, I believe, a 59 Ford truck. Well, the master and the slave down there come off of a 59 Ford truck. Uh, the brake system, that's a, probably a square body uh, master cylinder. And the rotors are, I believe, a 76 Camaro rotor. Of course, he had to take spindles off, put them in the lathe, and turn them down for the bearings to fit. But you gotta remember, this here, this was going on in the mid, late 80s. You didn't just jump on the interwebs and order from Summit. There wasn't no interwebs. You went to a junkyard and you found something that might fit and you brought it home and you made it work. That's basically what all this stuff is. But I believe the pedal assembly too inside the cab came out of that 59 Ford also. Well, the pedals, I think he might've made the frame for them. But it's just cobbled together out of a bunch of different stuff. Of course, the steering, it's all custom. You can see right there, it's what, four U-joints put together. And then he notched the top of the frame, I believe that's a Ford steering box. I don't know if it came out of the same truck as that clutch slave, uh, master slave cylinder. But I do know it's a Ford box. Well, let me show you the other side. There's the other side of it right there. It's sort of boxed in. It's basically on the other side of the frame. It just comes through the inside. The reason he did that is a lot of people back then would cock these motors when they put them in these trucks to uh, miss the steering. Well, that looked like garbage, and he didn't want to do that. So he cut the frame there and uh, reinforced it where he uh, cut the top of it and uh, it drives like garbage it's got probably a half a turn of play in the steering wheel but it got me down the road of course i dressed it up with all this very pretty blue and red fake braided hose stuff that definitely dates the motor right there and it's been sitting right here for about eight years i'd say that's the last time i started it used to sit over here under the carport and I got it running, got out of the way so I could put my car under there. It's pitiful that car's been sitting there that long. That's going to be another video soon too, hopefully. Anyway, been sitting here for about eight years. And it's been off the road probably 25, 26 years, somewhere in there. Uh, so we're going to see if we can get the old girl running. I'll have to find a tire or two for it. Put the alternator back on it. And uh, hopefully it'll fire up and uh, we'll take this thing for a ride. Let's check a few things before we get started. It ought to be okay. Let's just see if we got any water in it. Oh yeah, I see green down in there. So that's good. Let me check the Earl situation. Oh yeah, we got Earl in it too. Really black, but we got Earl. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be stuck let me see if I can grab a hold of it real quick. Oh yeah, it moved. It's not stuck. So that's good. So I think first thing I'm going to do is get the alternator back on it. And uh, throw a battery in it. See what happens. All right. You might be wondering why I'm putting the bracket and the alternator on at the same time. Well, I'm having to use washers for spacers right here. And you can't see it once the bracket and, and everything is on the motor. So I'm just going to do it this way, just so I can, it's just a lot easier. All 
Alrighty, I got the alternator on. So I think I'm gonna try to get this fuel filter off now and just see what kind of shape it's in. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh yeah, that ain't coming off anytime soon. I don't have a strap wrench to fit it either. I do have some big chanter locks. Let me get them. All right, let's see if we can get her off with these. Come on, oh, there it went. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I may fill it up with some fresh gasoline. I'm going to pour it out and see what it looks like. Well, it ain't too bad looking. It smells really, really bad. And there's a lot of rust down in it, I see. It's doing its job. I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with some fresh gas. All righty, she is full of gasoline. Alrighty, let's take a look at the carburetor. roster. Secondaries are stuck, which it don't really matter. But, oh, there they are. Okay. Yeah, they're operating now. It's got a manual choke. I never hooked it up. And <laughs> let me show you this real quick. That's how I got the throttle cable hooked to the throttle. You know what that is? It's a ring terminal for for wiring. Hey, it's all I had, don't make fun. Well, I think it's time to probably fill the bowls up, stick the battery in it, and go search for a key for about three hours, and then see if it fire up. It's got ATI ignition, so there's no points, so all that should be good. So let's try it, see what it'll do. All right, I got the battery in. It goes in the floorboard here. And this ain't the right battery. But you have to make do with what you got. It likes two, three inches reaching. So I just grabbed these little cables because my jumper cables ain't here. I just grabbed these little cables and got it jumped. Don't judge. If it works, it works. And I found a bunch of keys in the house. I'm pretty sure one of these will fit. So let's get over here and try them on. I'm really afraid to touch any of these pedals, but we've got to check them. So here's the clutch. It ain't too terrible bad. It's a little rough feeling. Brakes. Oh, they just went. Yep. They actually may be stuck. <laughs> we'll have to check on them here in a minute. But this key, it had it turn. There it went. All right. Let's just see if starter will turn over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. All right. Well, let me go fill the carburetor up with gas and put a little fresh gas in the tank. And let's just see if this thing will start. All right, I'm gonna fill the carburetor up. I got some in the gas tank already. Then we'll give it a try. All right, let's see if it'll do anything. <laughs> Oh, look at there. She gonna run. Come on, baby. Well, there you have it. She's running. I'm amazed it started up that easy, but hey, whatever. Running a little rough. Uh, it may need spark plugs. I'm not sure. Uh, but it is running. I don't want to run it very long right here because there's 
like 47 bushels of dry, very dry leaves underneath this thing right here. I'm afraid they're gonna catch on fire maybe from the exhaust. So I guess next what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get some tires on this thing. See if we can't move it out of this spot. Well, about the only choice of tire and wheel I got right now, and other than going by and some, is these old MT streets I used to run on my car back when it was drag race. Uh, I think they'll hold there and I think they'll be just fine. So let me get it jacked up and get these tires on it and see if that other front one will hold air. And we'll try to drive it out of this spot at least and get it away from these leaves. Well, the ground is soft underneath this truck. I'm having a hard time getting it jacked up. Jack just goes down in the ground. Don't try this at home. These ain't gonna fit a bit. Nope. Noop, noop, and noop. I forgot about these big old air shocks on it. I wonder if I can get them out of the way for now. Let me try that. Woo. Anybody need a really, really old air shock? Well, as I suspected, it's now hitting the inner fender. I gotta take that back off. Well, the only tire I have in this whole place that'll work is a spare off my S10. Let's do it. It ain't a good sign when you got twigs and dirt sticking out of your tire. Well, it's holding air, but that's about all it's doing. All I want to do right now is just move it right here in front of the garage so I can let it sit here and run, warm up, make sure the thermostat ain't gonna stick, maybe work on the carburetor a little bit. All right, let's see if we can get the old girl to move. Well, it's acting like the fuel pump ain't working. Plus, I think there is a brake stuck. Uh, I'm gonna pull this fuel line off and turn it over, see if the fuel pump is pumping. If it ain't, then uh, I'll have to get a fuel pump. Well, it could be the line stopped up. I may blow back through them first. If that don't fix it, then I'll have to get a fuel pump. So let me get that line off real quick. Let's see if we're getting any fuel. I don't think it's pumping anything. No, sir. I also hear some sucking, like a spark plug hole. Spark plug is loose, or I don't know where that's coming from. Let me investigate that a little bit. Well, I found the culprit for the sucking noise. That sparking plug right there wasn't tight at all. I got ears like a hawk. Well, the fuel filter's bone dry, so that tells me the pump might be working. And that line stopped up, so let me take that line off and blow through it. Well, I took the line off going back to the gas tank and blew through it and it's clear. I filled the fuel filter back up and uh, 
filled the bowl with the carburetor back up. So I'm gonna see if it start, and uh, maybe we can get some uh, gas pumping. <laughs> Well, we had gas pumping. I don't know if it's just sucking it out of the filter or if we're actually pumping gas. So I'm gonna get a jug and uh, start it up again because I don't want it splashing all over the motor, set, set everything on fire. Like I said, there's a bunch of leaves down there. I want to get it away from there. she might be pumping now well it's fired up and it's running on its own now so it's pumping gas but it didn't want to uh, run very good I noticed gas pouring out that back vent hole so I had to give it a little adjustment with the channel locks and now she's sitting there purring like a kitten it's starting to rain but I still want to see if I can get it out of this hole here so let me mount the camera and see if we can get it to move well, that tire went down on me real quick. I can't figure out why. It, it looks pretty good. So I scrounged around and found this one. And it's one of them that will fool you. You think it looks pretty decent until you go to squeezing on it. You see all the little tiny dry rock cracks in it. So don't y'all stand too close to that one because it may pop on us too. All right, let me see if I can get it out of this hole right here. Well, she come on out of the hole, but I had to mash on the one power pedal just a little bit. She didn't want to come out. I thought a brake was stuck, but then I got out and saw where I had left this concrete block sitting under it. So I guess I just basically drove over that block. So the brakes do work too. I hit the brakes and they do work. So that's great. Uh, but this is that pile of leaves that I wanted to get it off of. I was afraid they're gonna catch on fire. So now we ain't gotta worry about that. So the rain has pretty much moved away, I guess. So I won't spend a little time cleaning this bed out because she's pretty much where she's gonna be until I can get some tires. I don't really want to buy new tires for these wheels. I like how these wheels look, but I'm probably gonna go a completely different direction eventually. So I guess I'll just find me four old junk wheels and tires good enough to ride around on right now. Anyway, let me get on this bed and get it cleaned out. I know y'all won't believe me unless I show you, but the headlights work. And let me show you back here. Tail light works. And let me show you in here. Interior lights work. Pretty dang amazing. And brake light works. See it flashing?
not only was the bed of this truck a mulch bed, well, for some reason I got a bunch of broken tile in here too. Why? I don't know. I just don't know. Now that I got the bed cleaned out, I think I'm gonna pull it in the front yard, drag a pressure washer out, try to knock some of this moss off of it, make it look just a little bit better. Well, there she is all cleaned up ready to go to town she ain't got no shoes though i don't know what i'm gonna do about that i gotta get on the interwebs tonight i guess and see what i can figure out for us tires maybe some old wheels we'll just have to see but there she is looks a little bit better anyway well she got to where she didn't want to idle so i adjusted on the carburetor a little bit and uh, now she's idling pretty good most of the hesitation's gone but uh, I had to turn the idle mixture screws out four turns. That's how oversized that carburetor is for that little old motor. But uh, it runs pretty decent now. Got a little bit of a hesitation. But it ain't bad. Uh, I'll tell you something else. I ain't heard a good set of glass packs in a long time. You know, everybody runs chambered mufflers now. Listen to these glass packs. It's got a little mess in it, but uh, it still sounds pretty good. I'll probably put a set of plugs and wires on in here eventually. But the old girl's running pretty good. I said the brakes were working, and they are. Well, they worked from there to right here. Uh, but there's a, I feel like a brake locking up. I think it's that right rear. And I was just checking the fluid. And, uh, it's pretty full. I don't think it's leaked any out. A lot of rust in there. But I mean, you know, it's been sitting up for 26 years. Hopefully with a little bit of driving, that right rear will uh, go to acting right again. Well, I got the old girl some shoes. She said she didn't want no high heels. She wanted running shoes. So we got some raised white letters. I believe we're going to bring back raised white letters. Those ain't the prettiest I've ever seen, but they'll have to do. I even cleaned up the wheels. They don't look too bad other than the center caps. 
And let me show you what else it did. Yep. She is officially back on the road. So the only thing left to do that I can think of is let's take her for a ride. First place we gotta go to is the gas station. I hope we make it because I'm running on fumes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about having to fight that steer. Good administration. Well, I guess I'll have to phone a friend on this one. Well, while I'm waiting for somebody to come pick me up, how's your day? Mine's going great. I'm not sure this thing ran out of gas. It may be that filter. I don't think so, but I put a couple gallons in this thing yesterday, and all they did was sit there and idle for about 30 minutes. Uh, if it gets that bad of gas mileage, I'm going to park this sucker. Well, it just started up, so I don't think I'm out of gas. There's something else going on. I gotta get back on. I'm glad this truck don't weigh much. <clears throat> Ooh. 
Well, I don't know what's going on with the thing. I don't think it's out of gas because it started up and I drove it for another 200 yards before it quit again. Uh, so I don't know what it is. Uh, I decided to get out and push it because that's a pretty busy highway behind me. And uh, I had probably 10, 15 cars come zipping by me. Not one single person stopped to ask me, did I need help pushing this truck? Don't be those people. You see somebody struggling, help them out. Well, I just put five gallons in it. Let's see if I can get it started. Battery's probably gonna run down. Oh, now my key don't work. Oh, this is just great. Come on, girl. coming from the tank maybe stopped up I don't know Well, I run across these two guys right here just a minute ago. Nicest guys in the world. This is Nathan. This is Mike. Mike brought me to his house so I could blow the fuel line out going to the gas tank. She's running again. I got to get home. Just broke. I swear. See that right there? That's my throttle cable. It just broke. Well, I got it fixed again with another electrical outlet, and let me see if I can get it home.
just blew through that stop sign. <laughs> I gotta get this thing home. Quite the adventure. At least I finally made it home. Uh, there's three things that has moved to the top of the list as top priority. One, brakes. Got to have brakes. So, I don't know what that was. The brake pedal just let go, but then it started braking better. But it also started pulling to the left, which it used to. It would pull some anyway because the brakes never were all that great. But that's number one priority getting the brakes fixed. Number two, pulling that gas tank out, cleaning it real good, and probably put some tank liner in it so we can stop the rust all together. And then three, fix that stupid throttle cable like it's supposed to be instead of having the darn ring terminal on it. I mean, there's a lot more on the list, but those are the first three that I'm gonna start with. She needs a lot of work. You'll see more of her on the channel from time to time, so be looking for it. Once again, I'd like to thank uh, Nathan for helping me push the truck to Mike's house and appreciate mike letting me use his air compressor tools to blow that fuel line out again appreciate it guys and in case y'all haven't caught on yet i try to get a video out every friday at 7 p.m well i'm a day late on this one but i've been working on a pretty big project this last week and i haven't had time to do anything better late than ever i guess appreciate y'all watching hope you enjoyed it if you don't mind hit that like comment subscribe and until next time go do something Blurp.